Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week, Long Story 2, a new visual novel game, was released to Steam and Itch.io. Bevy upgraded to WGPU 25, as well as Rust 1.88 with If Let Chains. And we also see the continued development of some of the Bevy Jam 6 games, including building into compute shaders and more. And kicking it off, 19730 introduces Bevy Feathers, which is an opinionated widget toolkit and theming system intended for use by the Bevy Editor, World Inspector, and other tools. The Bevy Feathers crate is incomplete and hidden behind an experimental feature flag, so don't expect this to drop right into your game at the moment, because the API is going to change significantly before it's actually released. And then type and race materials are pretty exciting. In order to enable a number of patterns for dynamic materials in the engine, it's desirable to decouple the renderer from the material trait. This opens the possibility for materials that aren't coupled to as bind group, 2D using the underlying 3D bindless infrastructure, dynamic materials that can change their layout at runtime, and materials that aren't even backed by a Rust struct at all. There are, of course, interesting benchmarks if you'd like to dive deeper into the PR, as well as a new example called Manual Material that demonstrates how to implement a material manually using the mid-level render APIs. 18.866 is a first step towards first-party tile maps, starting with a simple tile map chunk rendering abstraction. You can check out the new tile map chunk example, which is what you see on screen here, as well as the code from that demo, which shows how to spawn in a chunk. It is important to note that this is pretty early. It is only a rendering abstraction and thus only really supports square tiles, as well as not that many features that you might find in other external crates. It is, however, intended to be the basis on which first party tile map APIs are built. And another one for the core widgets this week, 19778 adds radio buttons to the core widgets group. And bringing up the tail end of the PRs, we've got 19743, which brings serializable meshes, which means that now you can attempt use cases such as sending a mesh over the Bevy remote protocol. This is interesting in the context of building external editors that communicate with and fetch meshes and send meshes back and forth. The author's personal use case is for a nav mesh editor. And of course, as always, there's Alice's merge train, which is a maintainer level view into active PRs and how the Bevy sausage is made. And that, of course, brings us into the showcase with a fluid simulation. This is a simplified, that is not realistic, simulation using the pipe method to move vertices on a plane. And then we've got a new skill in a composable ability system. The code for the implementation is actually included in the Discord thread, including the zones and the projectiles. So if you want to check it out, definitely go do that in the Discord thread. Now, next up, the source material for this was a little bit small. So note that this is very zoomed in. But this is Abiogenesis on Compute Shaders. Abiogenesis was a Bevy Jam 6 entry that was ported to run on Compute Shaders afterwards, which boosted the number of available particles from 3,000 to 100,000. And then we've got a Beat Saber map viewer that supports V3 slash group lighting. Now, I've never played Beat Saber myself, but this looks to me like Beat Saber. And note that there is a decent amount of bloom in this demo, so the bloom on the back background and the video compression isn't going to look that great. And next up, we've got text layout from line gizmos. These are numbers drawn from line gizmos marking the squad groupings. So the demo here is the little numbers on top of each of these gizmos, which are drawn via lines or line gizmos, that is. And this is Max Obliterate, which is a Bevy Jam 6 entry that had a broken web build, but got fixed afterwards and re-uploaded after the jam. Destroy enemy bases, but be careful. Destroying enemies causes a chain reaction of explosions that can lead to your own destruction. And then we've got Long Story 2, which is an exciting new release. Long Story 2 is a newly published game on Steam and itch.io that is, as the title might imply, a sequel. The friendliest dating sim on the planet is back and ready to cuddle, a long-awaited sequel to the award-winning visual novel Long Story. The new season picks up where the first ended, the summer before high school begins. And then we've got a fairy chess engine prototype. The game lets you change piece types and extend the board during the match, allowing you to escape tight situations or certain checkmates. It supports 21 different piece types and up to 15 by 16 boards and is available on itch.io. Then we've got a prototype of a Bevy UI based enchanting menu for this 3D game. And we've got a demo that is a bit light on visuals that is a first draft of a crate called Bevy Mod Asset Packs. Bevy Mod Asset Packs implements a cargo like package manager within Bevy to enable creating modular data packs for your game. It's implemented on top of a modified asset reader trait together with support for downloading asset packs from Git repositories, Git LFS, and custom registers. And into the crate releases this week with Bevy URDF. Import robots from URDF descriptors and run simulations with Rapier, including support for drones. And Bevy Config Stack 0.2 is out. Bevy Config Stack loads RON files from the assets directory into resources. 
implementing hot reloading to keep resources up to date. And finally, for brand new releases this week, we've got Bevy Slow Text Outline 0.1. Bevy Slow Text Outline adds a text outline component for UI text. The implementation here is naive, and there was discussion for whether this should go into Bevy Core or not. So note that outline widths for this implementation are capped at eight by default. Small widths, like one or two, will not have serious performance issues. And finally, in the educational section, we've got a video from Biped Potato, which is coding active ragdolls with Bevy and Rust. This is creating a physics-based character controller with procedural animations. And that's it for this week. As always, we've got all the pull requests that are opened. If you want to get involved, go do some review on some PRs. You do not need to be part of the Bevy organization to do review on these PRs. And it's a great way to start getting involved with the Bevy project. That's it for me this week. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your week.